Hello everyone, this is Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome to my channel and my second video. Just a quick mention before we get started. To anyone who watched my first video and noticed I had a few issues with my focus. I have now got that sorted so you'll be able to watch this video without feeling sick. And thank you by the way to anyone who watched and liked and subscribed. I really do appreciate that. I did gain a few new subscribers, which I'm very happy about. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and, con and consider subscribing. It really does help out. Right, on to what we're going to be doing today. I've decided with my YouTube channel going forward, I'm going to make a junk journal from start to finish. And I'm going to make my favourite type of journal, which is a soft cover one. I found this beautiful fabric on eBay. I was looking for Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady fabric. I didn't find any, but I did find this. It was described as Country Diary like, and it is. I think it will go very well with the images from the Country Diary book. Uh, I will put the link in the description because I believe the lady does have some pieces of this left. It does have some slight damage, she mentioned in the description. She wasn't sure if it was dirt or whether it was a crease. I, I've i managed to get two pieces. I didn't actually look for the damage. I couldn't find any damage. I think one end did look a bit dirty, but I sponged it and it came up lovely. Uh, I didn't wash it because it's a lovely stiff fabric. What I did is, as I ironed it, I febrezed it. Yeah, I use the antibacterial Febreze, so that should get rid of any nasties that may be hanging about on it. Because it is, she believes, a vintage fabric. She doesn't know the make of it or where it came from. If anyone's seen it, you may be able to let me know. But I've, I've not found this fabric anywhere else, and it's really lovely. So, let me show you a cover that I've already made. This is two pieces of fabric bonded together with a piece of cardstock and the heat and bond. I did mention that in my first video, heat and bond. I started using this quite a few years ago when I made mini albums. It's ever so good for bonding fabric to fabric, fabric to card, even card to card I use it for. It's a lot less messy than glue and I think it's quicker. And you do get better results. It does come on a huge roll. Uh, you can get smaller ones I believe. I think the first one I ever bought was a smaller roll. And I get this through Amazon from a company called Supermart USA. Because I am obviously in the UK. If you're in the US, you may be able to just pop into your local Target, Walmart, <laughs> wherever, and get this. Uh, this roll is five and a quarter yards long and it is 17 inches wide. In English money, that's 4.8 metres by 43 centimetres. So it is a good size. I did work out that I could get 15 of these journal covers out of this, which considering I think this roll cost me about 15 pounds, it's a pound a cover, I think that's really good. If I was actually bonding just two sheets of cardstock together, or a sheet of cardstock to one sheet of fabric, that would make 30 which I think is really good. Right, I'll pop the cover to one side and show you the actual stuff. Right, that's the big roll. That, that's how big it comes and it cuts so easily with scissors. It's just like cutting uh, interfacing tissue paper. So we'll roll that up and bob that out of the way. Hopefully we've got no nasty focus issues today when my hands get near the camera. Right. These are my two pieces of fabric I've cut out. Is that? Yeah, that's the way up I want it. So I've got my floral fabric and a piece of muslin fabric. Again, I just get this off either eBay or, um, yeah, Amazon. I've got a piece of cream cardstock that I'm going to use to sandwich in between. And I've already pre-cut two pieces of heat and bond. Well, actually, I cut it on three sides because I did want to show you how easy it is to cut. So I'll grab my big chompy scissors. 
you want to cut this slightly smaller than your cardstock. So if I lay that on, you can see the three edges that I've already cut. It's really easy to just fold it, mark it, and cut it. So I'm just going to fold that down a little bit, just make sure it's still straight. Put a little bit of a crease in, and then I'm just going to cut along that crease line. It's so easy. You don't have to be exact. No one's going to take your journal apart to check your lines are straight. Let's just make sure that's okay. Um, I cut my finger last night making tea. Not a cup of tea. If you're not in Yorkshire, you might not know that to us in Yorkshire, tea is our evening meal. You probably call it dinner. Uh, we call lunch dinner, but that's a whole other story. So that's one piece cut. Get the second piece in. Now for this second one, I'm just going to lay my first piece on top and cut along the edge. We already know that's the right size, don't we? I'll move my cardstock because I don't want to cut that by accident. I won't cut my paint. I've just got a piece of wallpaper on my mat today because I'm going to be ironing and I don't want any nasties to come up off my craft mat. This is the stuff that I use as a background when I take photographs from my Instagram and Etsy. Right, they're cut ready. I'll put one piece out of the way, bring my card back in. Oh, I'm just going to cut the corners, just round them off. I just think it finishes it off a little bit better. You won't really see it unless you start peeling back your fabric. I don't know where those ends have gone. Gone. They're just... Oh yeah, I'm using a corner chomp that actually collects them. Yes, until you start waving it about and then they fall all over your project. I'll over that up later. So, my piece of card stuck. I will lay this piece of heat and bond down. It does have two sides. There's a smooth side and there's a side that's all bobbly where your glue is. And you want that side down to your cardstock. I have preheated my little craft iron. Yep. You know, if you watched the last one, I didn't want to sew on camera. Now I've decided I'm going to iron on camera. So I really do hope this does not go horribly wrong. Right, I've got it set, not quite to maximum. This has three, most irons do, they do in the UK, I'm not sure about anywhere else. One dot, two dot, three dots. I've got it set about midway between the two and three dots. Right, I'm going to plunk it down and start ironing it. Pressing down quite firmly. You will start to see when this heat and bond starts to stick what will happen is it will leave a layer of glue on your cardstock and the backing will peel off you know if you've ever done any like iron on transfers or anything like that it's pretty similar just move my fabric you can see it's already stuck down at that end a little bit more needed there oh, i'm making this look like hard work aren't i Whoa. press it down I think that might have done it. It's really quick, especially if you use your big iron in your ironing board. If you just bend it, oh yeah, I, I can see it. Can you see that little wrinkle? That means that's not quite stuck, so I'm just going to go back over that little bit. Pop my iron down. I'm quite happy with that. Now, here's the difficult bit if you've got no nails like me peel up the corner. I always start to peel it back quite slowly just to make sure it has stuck. Can you see? You can see the shiny adhesive stick to the card. Just peel that off. Oh no, can you see what I've got in the middle? Can you see that? That is one of the tiny little bumps from my corner chomper. I don't believe it. Pop that to one side. Hmm. I'm going to do a tiny little bit of surgery on this now before we go on. I'm going to grab my craft knife. I'm not going to grab a sharp one. This blade is pretty old and I'm just going to poke that out. Can you see? It's just in there under a tiny thin layer 
with adhesive. I'll just grab that, get rid. We're now going to have a tiny little spot there with no glue. But that, you honestly, you won't know that is there. If you wanted to be really frugal with this heat and bond, you could perhaps just put some around the edge and a few strips down. Uh, right, so we've now got our adhesive on the card. I will now just move that and I'm going to lay down my pattern fabric. Move any little strings that I've got. I do rip the edges of my fabric. I like this frayed look. And when you've put the journal cover together, if you sew around the edges, you can, that will ensure that it doesn't fray any further. Or you can get a product called Fray Stop or Fray Check. It's really good. I use that sometimes on my embellishments just to make sure things don't fray any further than we want. Right, we've now got the card down, the adhesive side down, onto the fabric. Backing with a craft iron. I start off on this side just until it seems to have just stuck a little bit. It's much easier to do it on the fabric side, but what I don't want to do is have the fabric move when I turn this over. So with the card, yep, that's start to stick. Carefully turn that over. Now we can see the fabric side again. And we'll come in and just finish ironing that on. This is the most ironing I do. I very rarely iron clothes. I find it easier to make sure clothes don't need ironing before you buy them. <laughs> right, you may have to be a little bit more firm this time because the fabric is a lot thicker than the heat and bond backing. Just keep lifting it. Oh yeah, I can see it's starting to stick. A little bit more pressure. I'll just, I'll just do it in tiny little circles. You want to get heat but not too much that you end up scorching your fabric. I don't know if it's possible to over melt this heat and bond. I've never done it. So I couldn't tell you what if it's possible and if so what happens. Right. Oh that's... You can feel it heating up. Well, I suppose people who actually iron will know this. I don't iron very much. In fact, a funny story on that. Oh, it must be seven, eight years ago now. I got a new neighbour. And when she first moved in, she came round, introduced herself and asked very kindly, did I have an iron and an ironing board that she could borrow? As she'd not moved all her things in and she needed to iron her clothes for work. And I just, sorry, I don't have an ironing board, which at the time I didn't iron. And I didn't own an iron. The only iron I own is in my, I've got a china cabinet. And I think when my mum passed away, my sister thought it would be funny to give me the iron because I never ironed. And I just plonked it in my china cabinet. Right, I think that's stuck now. Oh, not quite in that corner. I'm going to turn mine up a tiny bit because this fabric is quite thick. And to be honest, I did do the first one with my big iron. Oh, that's it. Right, happy with that. So yeah, back to the story. So I told her I don't have an iron and sent her on away. Oh, we've got a little corner not stuck. Anyway, I then noticed that behind me in my living room was my ironing board because I did actually own one but I use it for crafts and at the time I was just getting things ready for a Christmas fair and it was piled high with cards and <laughs> packets and envelopes as I was just packing them up ready so new neighbour knocks on the door asks to borrow something I tell her sorry I don't own an ironing board and quite clearly in the background behind me is an ironing board Anyway, we laughed about it later. I did get to know her. She was a really good neighbour. She has moved now. We're still in touch. But yeah, I bet she went away thinking, what a liar she is. Yeah, anyway, I've put the heat and bond now down onto the second sheet onto the cardstock. Oh, can you see how much easier this is 
when it's only got the backing paper to go through. So anyway, if you're watching this, Bev, yeah, I've mentioned you. I'd like to think you're going to subscribe and like, or I'll never lend you my ironing board again. <laughs> In the end, I actually did give her that ironing board <laughs> when I got a new desk and more space. Right, oh, that seems to be stuck now. Just peel this edge. I really need to grow my nails again. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Might be a few little wrinkles that aren't stuck, but that will stick when I apply my other sheet of fabric. Right, I'm going to come in now with my muslin. I'll leave that that way, because I'm going to iron directly onto this muslin fabric next time. I will try and line this up. Sorry if my head got in the way. On this one, I think my muslin fabric's a little bit taller, which I don't mind. I quite often make them with the inside fabric either smaller or larger. Do we like that? Let's have a look. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I may actually, on this one, end up trimming a little bit off that bottom edge. I seem to have got it quite long. But I'm happy with the sides. I'm happy with the top. Let me just check that is the top. Is it, or is that going to be the bottom? Yes, that'll be the top. Right, back in with the iron. Start in the middle. Pressing firmly. The muslin fabric is not quite as thick as my cover fabric. So I think it should stick a lot quicker. It did take quite a long time to do the outer fabric. But again, didn't take half as long as it would have took me with a pot of glue and a brush. And I won't have to clean any brushes after. I won't be peeling it off my fingers for days. And I don't know about you, but I'm really good at getting glue on clothes. I always wear old clothes when I'm crafting. The states I go to that door in when I answer it. I don't know what delivery people think of me. My friends know that I dress like a tramp when I'm crafting. Right, that seems to be stuck. Oh, a little bit more there. Oh, go on. You've got a bit more strength than that, Julie. Is it done? That's done. Even if it didn't stick all the way around, when we come to sew it, it's going to hold it together. Let's have a look. If we just bend it, can you see that slight wrinkle? A little bit more there, and I think we're done. Really happy with this. There we go. I don't know how long that's took me. I'll be able to see when I finish the video. So I've managed to make a cover and talk your ear off in a lot less time than it would take me to do it with glue. Oh, that's just a bit of fluff. If you do look, can you see it is a little bit short, a bit longer, the muslin. <coughs> Let's turn it the way around. I can't remember which I wanted as my front. Do you know this fabric, it's, it's oriented the pattern so that there isn't really no wrong or right way. I think that could go anyway and you know to be honest I think I like that at the bottom yeah I would just leave that now the only thing left to do with that is to sew around the edge and like I said I'm not going to sew on camera I will sew this before I come back for the second episode so in the second episode what we'll be doing is bringing my part made journal we will be gathering our papers together that we are going to use. Depending on how long that takes, I may show you how to do some of these fold out pockets. I've learnt a lot of fold out pockets from a lady called Dawn at the book vandal shop. Uh, it's something I already did, but she just seems to do them so well. And <laughs> quite often I'll follow one of her tutorials, I'll do it completely wrong and end up with something completely different. Well, yay, happy accident. So that's today's video. That's what we're aiming for. That's our cover made. And 
thank you for joining me today and i'll see you in episode two thank you bye